By numbering the pages, you should be able to figure out that a saddle stitch book with nested signatures will not have pages 1 through 16 on the first signature, 17 through 22 on the second signature, and the last 16 pages, which is pages 23 through 36 on the third signature. Instead, the signatures will contain the following pages. Signature 1 will have pages 1 through 8 and 29 through 36. Signature 2 will have pages 9, 10, 27, and 28. And Signature 3 will have pages 11 through 26. The pages are not in a logical order for us where we have 16 plus 4 plus 16 because of the nature of nested signatures which is required for saddle stitching. This is why it's important to create a physical dummy. We cannot assume that our four-page signature lands in the middle of our two-page signatures, meaning we can't assume it will just be the middle four pages being pages 17 through 22. It'll actually be pages 9, 10, 27, and 28. You can see from my example here, after I have unfolded the signatures, um, all the numbers are all upside down and in random or seemingly random orders. And that's perfectly okay, we just have to understand that page 1 is going to print next to page 4. And that pages 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus page 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36 are all going to be on that first signature. Now it seems random to us when we just look at it, but if you were to fold the signature down, assemble the signatures, and bind the book using saddle stitching, after you three side trim the book and you look at it, all the pages will be back into the right order. Also remember when we are working with this workflow, you're never going to number the extra panels, you're just concerned with the core of the book. And so I've numbered the inside pages on my four page signature, but I haven't done anything to the outside just yet. The next step would be to count the number of additional pages needed to complete the additional fold-out panels. There should be two pages needed for every added panel. Make note of where these pages will need to be added when the InDesign document is created. For this example, we needed two additional panels. One will be off of the 9-10 panel, and the other will be off of the 27-28 panel. Each panel has a front and a back or two pages, so we'll need to add four additional pages. I've labeled them A, B, C, and D in my example. And as I said earlier in the lecture, I always number my pages and use letters for my extra panels so that I don't get them confused. After you have identified the number of pages to be added, you can translate your physical dum dummy into a hand-drawn schematic. Start by drawing the core pages of the book the way they would look in InDesign. Our book has 36 pages plus the fold-out panels, so I drew a 36-page InDesign layout. And again, if you're not comfortable with understanding or grasping this concept just yet, you can always create a new InDesign document, make it 36 pages facing pages, and then look at what the, pa the pages panel looks like and make a drawing of it. 